Hi there. In addition to economies of scale, there is another factor that can lead to decline in the average cost in the production by a firm. It is known as the learning curve and it has very basic concept working behind it. As the name goes, learning curve, it's a curve that gets engendered because there is a process of learning and this learning is in the labor of the firm primarily. Before we go into the details of it, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel so that you receive uh, more updated material on quantitative economics. You may like it if you find it useful and also click this bell icon so that you receive all the latest material. Now coming to the basic concept of this learning curve, it's basically engendered when we have a um, process that we undertake long enough and when we do it for long enough, it becomes easier over time and then it requires less energy, less time and lesser of the inputs. And this experience basically is uh, enabling more intensive and highly flexible and more applicable process due to which there is an effect which is known as learning curve effect. A reduction in the inputs happens and also the input cost it also happens as we go ahead and produce more and more of the output. This accumulation of the learning and experience in the production process basically declines the average cost curve of the inputs for a given output level at a certain time. So the same level of output can be produced using the same level of uh, a declined level of average cost. It, it is basically uh, originating from 1930s where it was observed uh, though it is something that can be in the past as well prior to 1930s but uh, it was observed during 1930s and it was observed in the labor because uh, labor has the learning ability. Uh, during the recent times, uh, there are computers that are artificially intelligent and AI basically is the new big thing in recent times and uh, machine learning is another thing. But the very basic theory of learning curve uh, stems from the learning ability of the labor. And it was observed in the aircraft industry where the labor were able to produce more than before. The work hours to produce one units, like one unit of output kept declining as production increased. So the average cost declined or in other words, the work hours to produce one unit that also declined. However, it is not exclusively related to labor because in addition to labor, raw material can be used lesser than before because of the experience longer and better experiences uh, had and then the scraps that are produced during the process of production, the wastes they are avoided or reduced due to which uh, there is um, decline in the average cost curve and this experience of learning comes when we have better methods of production uh, or and use, usage of raw material and better designs and tools are also improved. Now putting it uh, mathematically the inputs or the costs of input, they decline when the output increases. And this relationship is expressed in this way, that the cost is, it is related with the output. And this is alpha, which is the coefficient of Q output. And this is beta, which is the power of Q. Now let's delve deeper into it because the parametric uh, interpretation of these parameters and variables will help us to understand that how the relationship will hold. We know that C is there, it shows the cost and precisely speaking it is the average cost. Then we have output level and then we have alpha which is the average cost of the first unit of production. This is the uh, symbol of alpha. So this is that starting point where we calculate the average cost of the first unit produced and we have to monitor the average cost throughout the uh, uh, preceding units of output to see that how average cost has declined. And this uh, power beta, it is basically showing the learning effect. So it is uh, the most important parameter in this whole um, topic and uh, there are a few things that we should know about beta that it is less than zero, it is negative because the learning curve should slope downwards or negative slope should be there in order to show that there is decline in the average cost. Secondly, the absolute value that is the magnitude of beta when it increases the decline in average cost it becomes faster. It means that if uh, beta in absolute terms is greater, the slope it is greater and greater slope means that there will be a quick decline in the average cost. And how it, how it can become the slope, let us see, it is simply by logarithmically linearizing the 
learning effect equation that is this equation. So we calculate the log of this equation and then we will see that it will become this equation that's a log of c that's a log of alpha plus beta which was in the power and log of k. Now if we focus on this beta it is actually now showing the slope of the learning curve in a linear form because we have uh, logarithmically linearized it. Knowing this beta can help us quite a bit. So if the learning curve is now linearized, its slope will be beta and it can be calculated by taking the ratio of rise over run or the perpendicular over base which is here uh, log of some value a and log of some value b because we have taken the log so log is there in both of these parameters that is a and b. Now let's uh, focus on these two values that is a and b. A is known as the learning factor. As the name goes, it is a certain factor by which the uh, learning effect will take place. So this is the same definition that we talked about. It gets accumulated as there is more experience. Now this is 0 up to 1. Uh, this is the value. It remains between 0 and 1. As the value of A approaches to 0, the value of beta will approach to infinity. In other words, the learning effect will become more and more significant. Now let's talk about uh, small b. It is basically the output proportionality and it measures that how much the average cost will decline every time when output is uh, made manifold. Here, uh, for example, let us assume that we double the output. So if we assume that b is equal to 2, then this uh, denominator that is log b will become log 2, which is equal to 0 0.3010. So we can remember this value so that we'll be able to use it. Now this is a table in which we have assumed three values of A, that is 0 0.9, 0 0.6, 0 0.3. And we remember that value of A approaches to zero, the value of beta approaches to infinity. That is, we can expect that from this value of A to this value of A, the uh, learning effect will increase. In the first column, however, we have output and 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on are these the, are the values of it. These are basically uh, getting double, uh, the double of 1 is 2, then 4, 8 and so on, up to 5, 12 for example. So we have taken it uh, as uh, a multiple of 2 because we assume that small b is equal to 2, that is we are doubling the output in order to observe the learning effect. The initial average cost, that is the average cost of the first unit of output is uh, 100,000 in all the values of A definitely will be 100,000 but then it reduces and you can see that the decline is 90% uh, of the initial value that is uh, 90,000 and then it's 90% uh, and then it's 90% and so on. Here it will be 60% of the original or initial value of the average cost that is 60,000 and it will be 30% so it becomes 30%. So in this way you can see that there is a certain decline in the uh, average cost over these units. Now we can choose any uh, point for analysis. For example, if I choose 64 and I want to see that how the average cost has declined and the learning effect has taken place, I can uh, analyze this. So I have made this uh, bold and here I am going to calculate the value of beta because that shows the learning effect. We know that it is the ratio of uh, log of A and log of B. We already uh, have assumed that we are observing the learning effect as the output becomes double. So instead of small b, we are writing 2, whereas A is kept as it is. And we will put these values of A one by one, that is 0.9 in this case, in this case 0.6, and in this case 0.3. Now you can pause the video and see the simple calculations. The value beta here is minus 0.152 here, minus 0.737. And here, minus 1.736. So now we have three values of beta depending upon the various values of A, here, and here. So uh, the learning curve is to be used here. And here we will put these values. As you can see, we are putting these values. Uh, putting these values, I get the answer of C, which is the value of C that is the cost when the value of A is 0.9 and the output is 64. And here again, output is 64, output is 64, however, the value of A is 0.6 and 0.3. So you can see that the uh, cost is now 53,144 at output 64. So you can see from 100,000, it has decreased to 53,000, which approximately is the half of it. 
and when we talk about a, a lower value of small a, it is declined quite a bit, that is 4000 only and 4666 precisely speaking. And if you further decline the value of a, the learning effect will be more substantial because the average cost would decline to 73 units only. So you see as the value of A is declining, the uh, learning curve effect is substantial and the cost is declining substantially. Uh, so the higher the value of beta in absolute terms, the more is the reduction in the average cost, which means that there is a greater learning effect. So this table helps us to visualize the learning effect in a numerical way. Now this concept of learning effect is applicable in our real life analysis of the firms. For instance, a wide range of fields that is in manufacturing and assembly lines, etc. They uh, use this concept of learning effect. For example, in forecasting the requirements of the equipment, material, and personnel that are required. And in order to plan the production schedules and also the pricing decisions of the products and services. For instance, if you look at this graph, it shows that on y axis we have price and long run average cost, and on x axis we have Q. That is, the output is increasing from left to right, and the price and, and the long run average cost is plotted here. Price is assumed to be fixed. As you can see, a horizontal line is representing it. Then we have long run average cost curve, which is this negatively slow pattern. And you can see that before the point of Q2, the long run average cost curve is higher. So it's not a favorable region. At Q2, price and long run average cost curve, they intersect and become equal. And afterwards, till the range of Q3 and onwards, the uh, difference of price and long run average cost curve is now positive. It means that we are going to make profits out of it. So if we know about the learning curve effect, then we can know that what is that point of output where we can expect the uh, favorable region to set in and that is Q2 in this case. And before it, it is Q1 uh, and on all of this definitely we have to wait for the learning curve effect to reduce the long run average cost curve and bring it down as compared to the price. So it can be helpful information if we are managing a firm. This is the same interpretation that uh, we have just uh, seen in this diagram. So you can pause the video and you can see that how the same things are explained in this certain bit. Now we can do a numerical application. In this numerical application that we have here, uh, the statement guides us about what is happening and that is the average cost of producing the first piece of equipment in an assembly plant is this and the learning factor is 0.68 and the output proportionality factor is 3. So we have these three pieces of information and we are expected to find the percentage of reduction in the average cost of producing 500 pieces of equipment. So the information that we can extract is the initial average cost which is denoted by alpha and it is 30. Uh, $3500. And then we have learning factor which is given and that is represented by small a, it is 0.68. The output proportionality factor is B which is equal to 3. So we can use all of this information. We can put all these values in the formula that we have just learned. The value of beta can be found by taking the ratio of the logs of A and B respectively. So putting the values we get this expression and the final answer is minus 0.35. Now we can use this value to put here because alpha is already given and also we have the value of Q because we want to find out that how much of the percentage decline in average cost has taken place while we produce the 500th piece of the equipment. So putting all these values that is the initial average cost and the uh, certain unit that we are considering that is the 500th unit and the learning effect that is beta. We can solve it and we will get the average cost at this 500th unit of output. So this is a reduced level of average cost curve while producing the 500th unit because you can see that it was 3500 now it has reduced to 395. Now we have uh, to calculate the reduction in the average cost while we reach the 500th unit. So it will be the difference of the two that is the uh, average cost of producing the first unit and average cost of producing the 500th unit divided by the initial value that is the average cost of producing the first unit. Then we multiply it with 100 to make it a percentage. So we see that there is 88.7% decline in producing the 500th unit. So that's a substantial decline and here we have mentioned it. In addition to that, we can look at it in another way where we can see that average cost of producing 500 units is reduced to. That is, the overall was 100 and when we uh, subtract, 
88.7, we get 11.3. So it means that the average cost now is reduced to 11.3% of what it was before, when we reached the 500 unit while producing various levels of output. So 88.7% uh, is the decline, and what is remaining after all the decline is 11.3% of the initial average cost. A small corollary in this topic is the difference between economies of scale and learning curve. So here we are going to differentiate the two. That is, both learning curve effect and economies of scale, they cause cost reduction owing to the production increase. In both of them, we can see that there will be increase in production and the cost will decrease. But, but they are slightly different from each other. What is the difference? We can observe it in this diagram. Here you can see that there are two uh, known average cost curves, LAC1 and LAC2. On x-axis we have output and on y-axis we have longer than average cost curve. Now if we consider two points on LAC1, there will be A and B, and the vertical distance of the two will be this much, which on y-axis can be measured as C1 and C2. So this vertical distance is basically showing the uh, decline in the average cost curve in the long run due to economies of scale because it is the vertical distance on the same average cost curve that is LAC1. You can see both point A and point B are on the same uh, long run average cost curve. So the vertical distance because uh, average cost is measured on the vertical axis, we have to uh, calculate the vertical distance. So C2 and C1, the distance between the two is the decline in the average cost due to the economies of scale. Whereas the learning curve effect is basically due to the shifting of the entire curve. That is, LAC1 gets shifted to LAC2. Here, with the help of a dotted line, we can see that there is a shift, and that shift gives rise to LAC2. And the decline in the average cost, vertically again, but between the two average cost curves, is going to show the learning curve effect. Because, for example, at Q1, we initially were using C2, but now we are using somewhere close to C1. That is, the cost has declined substantially. And when we consider point B, point B is there. This was the cost uh, on long run average cost 1, but uh, long run average cost 2, due to the learning curve effect, will take place and the cost will reach this lower level. So you see that the uh, shifting is taking place in the case of learning curve effect and cost is declining. But the difference is there that is same long run average cost curve for the economies of scale that we have studied before and different or shifted down long run average cost curve for the learning curve effect. So this is how we have covered the topic of the learning curve effect from medical point of view by comparing with the economies of scale, by applying it, by making schedule in order to uh, see the effect of small a, that is the learning factor, and by diagrammatically depicting it as well, and also by observing its mathematical form, which helps us to actually calculate the learning curve effect. So I hope you have enjoyed this and if you have really enjoyed it, you can give it a thumbs up. Thank you.